Hey everyone, Mitch again with the 1925 Model T Ford. So in this video we're going to be replacing the timer. Um, the old one has gotten quite badly worn as you'll see uh, in the video, um, which is making the T very difficult to start, particularly in cold weather. Um, just a quick one on that, if you check out my other videos you'll see the procedures, um, little tips and tricks for starting your Model T in cold weather. But getting off on tangent there, uh, replacing the timer, as I say, um, she is uh, a little bit hard to start at the moment um, because the timer is badly worn. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so I've got a bit ahead of myself. I've already gone ahead and put the uh, wires onto the new timer. We'll just shoot over here <clears throat> and I'll pull the old timer out to show you. So we've undone this nut, which seems to have gotten tight again. Let's loosen that up. that out the way, lift up the timer, oh hang on, take that bit of wire out would help. There's supposed to be a split pin in here but uh, I don't think Henry Ford would disagree with what I'm doing here with a piece of wire, it sounds like something he would have done. Take the piece of wire out and pop the old timer out. Okay so what I've already, already gone ahead and changed the wires from the old uh, timer to the new one and the easiest way to do it is to undo them one by one off the old one and move the matching uh, the corresponding wire across that way you don't get the firing order mixed up because it wouldn't run at all if we got that stuffed up so we've got the uh, wires off the old uh, timer onto the new one and I'll just show you the old one I don't know if it quite comes up on the camera there but you can see there's a really bad groove all the way around on the old timer there it's really badly worn so it was definitely time for a new one and the uh, engine wasn't running very well with this one so I'll show you the difference between it and the new one you can see the difference the new one's smooth all the way around and the old one has got really bad grooving it's really badly worn anyway so now that's wired up we'll go ahead and install this one but first things first we've got to get the old roller out as well Okay, so before we can put the new timer in, um, I'm going to go ahead and replace the roller as well. And basically we have to undo this big nut on the end of the shaft here. I've already loosened it a bit, so there we go. So that should come under that. So we take that off. Take off this retaining ring here. Don't lose that, that is important. Okay, so once you've got the nut and the retaining ring off, there's a tiny little pin here, this little round pin right here. If you can't see it straight away, it just means the engine's not in the right position. Just turn the crank around slowly with the ignition off um, until this pin is visible on the top. Now, it only sits in there, so all we need to do is just get a hold of it and pull it out. Don't lose it, you will need it. It's very, very tiny. So now we've got that out. So just to reiterate what I was saying before, I've already got the pin out now, but if, if you can't see the pin, um, when you're going to remove it, usually it just means that the engine's around the wrong way. So basically all you've got to do is turn your crank over slowly until that slot is on top. And there it is. So once you've got that pin out, the time that the actual roller should simply just slide off the end of the shaft. And the fan belt's in the way there. There we go. There's the old one. And you can oop, try and get that on camera there. You can see there's a lot of play in that roller as well, so that's worn out as well. Now here we have the new one, right here. No play in that whatsoever. Brand new, we'll put that one on. And basically this little slot here, we want to line that up with the hole on the shaft down here. It might be a little dark to see what I'm doing. Okay, so we slide that on line the hole up like so, it'll just drop, that's okay. Grab that little tiny, where are we, that little pin, and uh, I think the camera wants to focus on it, and there we go, little tiny pin, and we'll just bring the roller around, and hopefully, there we go, goes in, oops, goes in like so, to hold the roller in place. Then we bring back our retaining ring there, and slide that on so it just tucks in over the top of that pin to stop it coming out and lastly the nut let's see if I can get it back 
and I'll just tighten that up. Okay, so we're ready to put the new timer cover in place, but before we do that, very important step here, which a lot of people miss out on, is actually lubricating it now. There is a little hole there where you can actually put a little um, squeezy bottle there to, to squirt some oil into it, like with an oil can. But what I'm going to do is actually apply it directly to the contacts with my finger. Sounds kind of counterintuitive putting oil somewhere where there's electricity, but that's how it's supposed to be. So it doesn't need a whole heap. So just enough oil in there to lubricate where the roller runs around the outside. So that's done. And before we go any further, I'm also going to lubricate the roller itself. So as I say, we need to lubricate the roller as well. Now it's in the wrong position, so we've just got to turn the engine over slowly until the roller is on top. There it is. Yep, there it is. And same as with the timer itself, just a little bit of oil on my finger and just lubricate the roller itself. Job done. So before we put the timer back into position, um, important just to make sure that all of these nuts are done up nice and tight. Just be mindful that um, depending on what timer you get, um, the actual uh, contacts themselves are probably going to be made of copper. So just bear that in mind. Don't reef right down on them, otherwise you'll strip the threads. So I'll just check, make sure these are tight, like that one is. Oh, that one's a bit loose. So you need, need to make sure that they're tight, but um, yeah, let's back that one off. Make sure that the contacts stay reasonably straight. There we go. There we go, they're all nice and tight, so we are ready to put the timer back in. So when you're ready to put the timer back in, try and keep the, uh, as best you can, try and keep the uh, wires all out of the way because obviously we don't want those getting caught up in the fan when the engine's running. So I've just tucked these two wires back over the top of here. So when you come to putting it in, you need to grab hold of this rod, if I get my hand through, put that back in its little home, and it's usually easiest to put your pin back in that holds it. Uh, get my hands in there. And uh, as you've seen, I've put a piece of wire in there instead of a proper pin because I didn't have one the right size. And I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. I'll just squeeze that back in. Like so. And pop the timer back on its little spot there. And, and then, oops, bump the camera. <clears throat> and then we bring this arm back over, which sits on the front of the timer there and holds it in place. We do up the nut back here, do that up, and you can see that arm um, holds the timer cover in place. I'll just grab my spanner here. Make sure that that's done up nice and tight. There we go. And that's the job done. Now, We'll see if the engine will start. Put the ignition on. Let's see what you can do. Voila! Look at that! That's my girl. I hope, uh, hope you guys found this uh, video helpful and educational. Um, as always, don't forget to uh, give us a big thumbs up, drop a comment below and uh, smash that subscribe button for us. It helps out the channel and it uh, certainly uh, gives me the motivation to do more videos. So until next time, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.